Hey guys, uh, yesterday I had a comment come through on one of the Kali videos that I've been working on um, and a user asked, how do I make Kali, my guest operating system, recognize my thumb drive? And I thought that was a really good question and a great topic for a video. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cover that in this video, but we're also going to cover um, how to access things like network drives, things like that. Um, so we're going to cover two topics in this video and let's just go ahead and jump right into that. So obviously here is our, our Kali Linux desktop, uh, pretty standard stuff here. And after doing some research, um, you know, I found, you know, a lot of stuff like, let me drag this over this for my host computer, um, you know, where you're going to do all kinds of uh, command line stuff here and making directories and mounting stuff and, and all of that. And that's fine, I guess. Um, I guess it gets the job done. But I think there's an easier way to do it rather than having to do an fdisk-l and and all this stuff. And so what I want to show you here is um, I've actually got, uh, this is just an 8 gig uh, USB stick that I've had laying around forever. Uh, I've got a couple of folders on here, a couple of files on here. And so basically, obviously the first thing you got to do is plug it in. So um, I've got a USB port uh, on my DOS keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And we'll give that just a second to, to load up. You know, let me, let me actually uh, go over here to my desktop of my host PC. Oops, and we'll drag this down. So uh, this is my, obviously my Windows setup here and I've got my my 250-ish gig SSD and a mass storage drive of three terabytes. And then I've got um, my, my USB stick is actually broken up into uh, two separate drives for some weird reason. Um, but we can see that it's actually here and it's, it's fine, it's working. Um, so what we're going to do is actually move this back to the other screen. I could go through and I could do that, you know, the the, the fdisk minus L and mount a drive and create a directory and do all of that stuff. But what I actually like to do here is quite a bit simpler than that. So what we're going to do is come down here to the very bottom uh, where we've got all of our indicators and settings and things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over this little uh, USB icon and I'm going to come down here and here we can see we've got my DOS keyboard, we've got a USB device, a Sandix Cruiser Micro, and a Logitech USB receiver. Um, that's that's from a mouse. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, and I don't remember which one of these actually works, um, but I'm going to select, uh, let's do the, the SanDisk USB Cruiser. I know that's a USB drive. Um, and we're going to give that just a second to, uh, to, to activate and, and go through its process. And we'll see what happens here. <clears throat> And bang, just that fast, um, there is uh, it's something called new volume uh, that automatically mounted to my desktop. If I open that, I get it'll, it'll be a little slower um, because of the, the USB 1.1 protocol that uh, VirtualBox is using because I haven't loaded additional drivers, that sort of thing. Um, but basically, we've got uh, our Kali folder here, which of course is empty at this point. And we've got a Windows folder here, and I've got some some stuff in here that if I wanted to, I could play um, like the the lightning bugs and the pony, ponies and balloons is uh, from the YouTube library of sound or music that you can download. And then Mr. Optimistic and About Time is uh, from a SoundCloud artist that I use uh, music from quite a bit. Her name is Diala. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But um, but yeah, then that this is like I said, that's the USB drive. I can play it. Um, and again, I could actually play this. It wouldn't be copyrighted or anything, but we can see that it is working here. So, uh, so if I close that, you know, we're getting all of this to work with no issues at all. Um, and again, this is from the USB drive. Now, the one thing I do have to mention here is that um, <clears throat> if I go back to my host PC here, we'll see that it's been disabled on um, on our on our on our host PC. Uh, of course, this is our Windows uh, system here because it can only be activated on one system at a time. Um, so if I, let's drag this back up here out of the way. And um, I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna create a new folder in here. Um, and I'm gonna say, uh, this is for demo purposes. There we go. I uh, never mind my weird casing there. So I click create. Um, now we've got uh, now we've got this extra folder here. So if I come down here to the to our little USB icon at the bottom, and I right click and I just click it again, it's going to deactivate it in Linux in my Kali uh, guest operating system. But if I come down here to the Windows operating system again and I open this up, 
uh, I've got my Kali folder, I've got my Windows folder, and now I've got the, you know, this is for demo purposes folder. So um, that's how we can uh, share a USB drive between systems. Just know that if you're going to do that, it can only be activated in one of those systems at a time, either the parent or the, sorry, the host or the guest system. So uh, if you want to share files between the two, you've got to do it that way, uh, at least that's the easiest way I can I can demonstrate how to do that. So uh, hopefully that helps um, both the person who, who asked the question as well as uh, anybody else who's wondering how to get a USB drive to work um, on their, their guest OS, in this case, Kali Linux. So the other thing I wanted to touch base on here, um, just to, to kind of kill two birds with one stone, since we're talking about external storage, you know, how do I get access to say a network drive? Um, in this case, I've got a home server that I keep all of my, my media media and, and all this stuff from my Plex server on. So uh, those folders are already shared um, and, and you can just go in and do sharing through Windows uh, just the normal way you do that. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, let me know. I can create a quick video on how to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to close that. That's on our guest operating system or host operating system there. That was the Windows. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and just click this folder and uh, this is our home directory for, for our user. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on other locations. And down here at the bottom, we actually wanna con uh, come down to where it says connect to server. And in here, we actually need to use um, SMB, which is uh, a protocol that Linux uses to communicate from Linux to Windows and back and forth. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in SMB and then colon and then forward slash forward slash. You can see I've already done this once. It's auto filling everything. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just uh, go ahead and uh, let that auto complete. That's the, the IP address to my home server. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and come over here and click connect. And just immediately, you can see all of the shared folders that are on there uh, with, with no issues at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the six terabyte drive. And uh, you know, if you, if you see here, it's actually already mounted that for us. Um, so that's actually pretty handy. I can actually just close this and just go right back into that folder. Um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, movies and music and TV shows and, and like ebooks. Um, you know, I've got like 1984, which I keep meaning to read and I haven't yet. Some hacking stuff that I'm trying to get into just for ethical hacking, that kind of stuff. Um, but now I've got access to a machine that's on my network um, that was had all, the, had all these folders shared. So um, there's a couple of different ways you can share media on your uh, guest operating system, whether it's through like a USB drive or a network drive. So both of those are actually pretty easy to, to access. Um, Again, there's a lot, of, a lot of videos and a lot of tutorials out there that want you to be an elite hacker and do everything through command line. And for the purist, I suppose that's okay. Um, it definitely is good to get familiar with the command line stuff. Um, but I'm lazy and I like to find the easiest way possible to, to access any of, uh, any of those shares or resources. Um, you know, I like to, to know how to do both ways. For the sake of this video, I wanted to show you how to do it the easiest way I know how. I should back up for just a moment though um, and, and say that uh, there's one other thing on here um, that, that you may want to address and that's if you go down here uh, to the bottom left where it says tweaks, uh, give that a second to load and click on desktop uh, where it says icons on desktop. If you turn that off, uh, your icons are going to disappear and it doesn't matter if you're doing a shared folder or a usb drive or you know like you've got um, your home and network services and your trash um, those tend to stack on top of each other sometimes um, but if you've got your your show icons turned off that's what it's going to do is it's going to turn your icons off so um, if you think you've got it right and you're not sure go down there into, into your tweaks icon go into the desktop and make sure that show icons is enabled otherwise uh, you'll be racking your brain trying to figure out well i did all of this why isn't it showing up so um, definitely make sure that the show icons um, little slider there is turned on so um, I, I hope that helps i hope that makes some sense for people and um and gives you an idea of how to access, uh, like I said, external drives, USB drives, network drives, things like that. So if it helped, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. It really does help me out a bunch. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, hit the subscribe button and let me know down in the comments below what kind of other stuff you'd like to see for future videos like this. Um, that would be great. I'd love to start a conversation with you there. So um, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off there. Um, don't forget, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.